Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have an unboxing for you here. Now I actually did start um, unboxing this already in the video, but then I kind of the camera kind of fell over, so I had to redo this. So I am sort of in this way already. But anyways, I wanted to show this unboxing here. I got I only got I believe two things. So I got one thing. I got a, a bulk pack of fifty. Uh, pairs of KD-158 couplers, which I'm really excited about. It means I can finally upgrade all my coupler boxes. Um, I, I actually bought, about a week ago, I bought a pack of 20 KD-58s. Uh, but then I quickly used up all of those because I, I had a bunch of Intermountain Reefers I had to upgrade from Bachman Easy Mates. So uh, that stuff quickly disappeared. And so as a result, I realized I had to buy much more than only 20. So I bought a pack of 50 uh, 158 couplers. So this is kind of cool. Train rod, train rod always includes this kind of stuff inside the um, box. It's a whole bunch of papers. Um, unfortunately, I'm just going to be tossing most of that, so that's always fun. And also came with the package, but I don't want to show my name, so obviously I'm not going to include that. And um, so here is the stuff. Now it's packaged not that well, actually. If you can, if you can't tell, this bubble stuff. That means that this stuff kind of shook around the entire time during shipping, which is not great. But regardless, I hope it's, I hope it's undamaged. So let's take this out. And actually, you can see the couplers right there. I'm gonna toss the box aside. And so here it is. So, anyways, I bought the KD 158, 158 pack of 50 couplers, which you can see there's a whole lot of couplers there. And um, also, I bought an MTH um, Pennsylvania Railroad Pullman Heavyweight two car set. Uh, MTH made three uh, heavyweight variety packs. There's the five car set, which is a P, uh, for the Pennsylvania, it is a B70 baggage, three um, 12 one Pullman heavyweight sleeper cars, and then one 32 observation car. And then they made two two car sets. One of them just came with two 12 one sleepers, and the other one came with, which is this one, it came with a B70 baggage and a 12 one sleeper set. Um, people complained about MTH because they only made one type of sleeper. You know, in the five car set, there was three of the same exact sleeper car, which is all the 12 one. But that being said, the 12 one sleeper was very, very common. And especially on the PRR, they had a whole ton of uh, 12 one sleeper cars. So I guess it's cool, but also I would prefer, I would also agree, I'd prefer a little bit more variety. But just in luck for me, I was actually missing one 12 one sleeper. And I figured the B70s are kind of cool because I have a whole bunch of uh, B60 baggage cars, which are definitely more common in the Pennsylvania. In fact, they had like a few hundred B60 B baggage cars, but they only had like five or 10 B70s. But I figured for some variety, um, I might as well get a B70 baggage card. They were rare, but they are a thing. They're not like completely made up. Um, so anyways, here's the uh, two-car heavyweight baggage sleeper passenger set. And um, shows the same thing on the other side. Let's make this the right angle. Uh, real quick, let's see the couplers. Yeah, pretty standard. Um, the whiskers and the skill heads are kind of cool. Um, this should at least hopefully last a little bit longer than my 20s, a uh, 20 pack. But anyways, so here is the big deal here. I'm going to open this up right now. Um... So anyways, yeah, I, I was missing one 12 one sleeper. I was going to get a Walders one, but then I figured might as well get this MTH one because I wanted also a B70 baggage car. Um, as I said, Pennsylvania only had like 10 of them out of their like 300 bag or 400 baggage cars. Um, I'm making those numbers out of my head, but it was somewhere around there. Um, and so they weren't common, but I would, I would like to get one. You know, I figured I might as well get one eventually. So um, here's some info on the cars. And I heard really good things about these cars. I think um, GM Pullman on the C on, on the Model Rarity magazine forums uh, made a, made, I think it was him. He made a post reviewing them and they looked really promising. So anyways, we'll see how they look. And here they are. And wow, they look pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, all right, so no no um, foam packaging of any sort. So it is just hard plastic, which I'm not the most confident in because um, it doesn't really provide for much shaking while in transit. But um, anyways, we'll take this out. Just, okay, that works too. <laughs> I was going to just take the clear part out, but oh well. All right, that is really cool. All right, so um, let's take out the baggage car first because that is definitely the one I'm more after. Because, um, again, a lot of people have made this car. Um, Walther's, Branchline, Atlas, which bought Branchline. Um, and I think that's actually it. <laughs> um, anyways, but multiple people multiple people make the 12-1 sleeper, whereas no one makes the B70B baggage car unless if you buy brass or something like that. Ooh, this is actually really cool. It actually comes with the Steamline... Um, yeah, that's the steam line, and then that's just the uh, chains that the Pullman Heavyweights had. Um, really interesting. I'm surprised they actually came with that. Walther's ones are actually not very well detailed, but they look really good, I still think. 
Anyways, let's take this out. Yeah, this looks really solid, actually. Look at the underbody detail. That's actually very, very impressive. I'm impressed by this. So while there's, by comparison, their, their underbody detail is just, like, the pieces, but there's no piping. So it's just, like, you see a whole bunch of stuff, but there's no piping connecting it. Which, I mean, is fine, because you don't see the piping anyways when it's on the side. But um, that is something that Branchline and MTH here did, well, you know, went out of the park, or whatever you call it. Went out of their way of doing. Um, also, I really like the generator um, cord here. Again, it's something that you usually don't see on the side, but... um. Yeah, so the generators, the Walters and branch line ones have, but this little extra part that's flexible is kind of fragile. Uh, that part only MTH has, which is really, really cool. Um, interestingly, I'm not really sure why they would need that, because the baggage cars, I don't believe, had power? Maybe they did have power, I'm not really sure. Um, they probably had power and lights to light up the insides when the when they're unloading. But anyways, um, just real quick, so you can see the MTH logo right there. There's some really nice underbody detail. I'll have to compare with photos online to see if it's actually accurate. Um, and yeah, um, the trucks are plastic, as you could tell. There are, um, if you guys can see, there's like the, the, the metal bearing part where it touches like the axles. Um, and that, that's where it picks up power. You can see the little bit of metal sticking out from the bottom there that goes into the body. You can see right there, yeah, that little piece of metal. That's where the power goes into the shell. Um, so that's pretty much for the underbody. There's some really fine um, steam traps there, which is really cool. And the setup steps are really fine, and they look pretty solid, actually. I hope they don't break off. All right, on the sides here, you can see the uh, pre-applied metal handrails, which is, a, again, a really nice touch. The windows are flush-mounted, as you can see. Uh, also look really good. They're also very fine. Oddly, as I said, like the Bachman ones, if you remember, those just were missing the windows entirely, which is really strange. Um, on the ends here, a very clearly a PRR prototype, because you can see these really weird-looking handrails. That's a Pennsylvania kind of custom. No one else made those. Um, those weird handrails like th this one here. Those were pretty common. That's a signature Pennsylvania kind of thing. The diaphragms actually do operate. That's really cool. Well, I'm not surprised, but um, that's really cool. Now, these look much more like branch line um, diaphragms in the sense that they don't actually go in and out. Uh, they don't go in and out, They actually, they, but they only go left and right. They don't go in and out, though, which, I mean, in, the in and out action is the more important... That's what she said. But anyways, <laughs> the in and out action is the much more important part because it actually helps the, the cars, you know, touch, die from touch. This left and right motion is cool, but it, it technically is not operating, um, which is kind of unfortunate. So, yeah, the diaphragms, they don't go in and out. They only go left and right. That's like the branch line kinds, and those aren't the best. But anyways, um, yeah. So, again, a lot of detail, which is really awesome. Uh, let's see the couplers out here. So there are the... These are the brake lines. Uh, but again, there's no steam piping that's in these bags here. Um, there's the uncoupling lever, which is really nice. There is no extended swing. Uh, it's sort of extended swing coupler. It's a really small, ex it's barely more than a regular coupler, but it is technically extended swing, I guess you could call it. Um, so that's kind of cool, I guess. It's not much of a difference, though. The roof is really solid. It's in a nice satin finish, which I really like. On the other side here is another brake wheel. Um, I'm not sure if that's prototypical. I don't know if they had brake. I'm assuming there's brake on both sides. Anyways, there's a door. I assume the door doesn't open. Yeah, it doesn't open. Um, I'm not I'm not surprised though. But overall, yeah, this is a really solid uh, car. It's a bit on the light side. I'm not sure. I assume there's interior lights because there are pickups. However, I don't think baggage cars should be lit up. This is not a this is not a messenger car. This is strictly just baggage cars. So these should not be lit up when the car is when the train is moving. So I might actually remove the lights on this car, which is kind of unfortunate. But I am gonna do that probably because prototypical accuracy um but otherwise it's really solid there's a whole bunch of the details on this car is amazing that being said though a lot of it is plastic so it's quite fragile um i really like the look of these um stirrup step doors on the sides here because there are actually the little pieces on the sides here that attach to it and then coupling lever again this a coupling lever i think it's it's also plastic so again quite fragile details however the fact that they do have it is really cool um anyways i think i'm rambling at this point this car is really nice i, I there's really nothing to complain about um yeah, there's, there really is nothing to complain about. Really free rolling too, which is really good. Um, all right, so I'm going to put this aside here. And let's take out the Pullman 12 one sleeper. Now, this one I can compare to my other cars because, again, this is no one makes that car, but a lot of people make this car. So I can compare this really closely with other cars to see which one is better. Um, I don't want to damage, I just want to take it out. Take it out from the diaphragms. All right. Cool. Another one of these. Awesome. All right. Now, hopefully you guys can see this. Let me just make sure the camera looks okay. Wow, this is pretty awesome. 
Um, <laughs> where to start? Um, the very first thing I can notice is that they have some painted on, I think, painted on um, window blinds. You can see the green stuff at the really top on the windows. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't like the look of those. They're they they are they have no there's no texture on them. They're very clearly painted on. Ah, uh, I don't like that. I I appreciate the fact that they added it, but I I actually add my own window blinds to my cars. Um, I use I use this kind of paper. It looks like sort of like a fabric texture, sort of. Um, and I basically just cut blinds out of them for each of my windows, and they turn out to look really good. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I like the fact that they added it, but. It's not the best looking. I think it could definitely could be done better. Anyways, sorry. Regardless, um, let's look around here. So there's the uh, glazed bathroom windows, and on this side, yep, this is correct. There should be three on this side. Um, basically, this is a twelve-one sleeper. That means there's twelve sections in one drawing room. The drawing rooms is basically your private room with your own bathroom, and then sections are really small, like cramped little rooms um, that technically have beds, but they're like the smallest possible room you could possibly use to cram beds in. Um, so basically. Uh, each of these two windows is one drawing room, or one section, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then six on the other side too. And then the one drawing room, which has its own bathroom, is right here. That's the drawing room, and that's its own bathroom. Um, and then that's the restroom, and then over here, the uh, six drawing rooms, that's another restroom, and then here's the walkway. That's the reason there's a little handrails. So in the inside, people, when the cars, when the train's moving, when you're walking in the, in the walkways, you can hold onto the handrails in case the train's jaking hard. Um, or turbulence, <laughs> I guess you could call it. But anyways, yeah, that's the little bit of historical part of this car. So let's see the inside. The inside is all molded as in one color. It's all that dark green, same with the window shades. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, the window shades are definitely painted on. I don't really like that. I wish there were separate pieces. But anyways, yeah, the interior is just one piece of plastic. Um, you can see sort of inside there. The uh, floor is raised, so they that's where they can hide the piece of metal as the weight. But um, yeah, it's just all one piece of... The same color, which I'm not a huge fan of. Walder's cars actually are, have much better interiors. Uh, the seats are one color, the floor is one color, and the walls are one color. So those look much better. Uh, these are all just one color, so it's not the best looking. It's very clearly just one piece of plastic, which is a bit unfortunate. But I do I do appreciate the fact that they do have interiors. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, the interior is definitely complete. You can see the walls as well as the seats. Um, anyways, sorry, continuing. Uh, on the outside, the paint is really nicely applied. The Pullman and this is in a really nice gold kind of color. You can see how it looks almost white under the reflection, and it's gold when you look directly at it, which is really nice. The handrails, as I said, has applied really well. The roof, nothing to complain about, really solid. Um, actually, you can see how these these little window vents or the bathroom vents on top here actually separately applied. You can see that one's kind of wonky, but it is separately applied, which is really cool. The Walders ones are just one piece molded on, uh, which is really fascinating. Uh, the doors and windows. Again, all the all the windows are flush mounted, which is really cool. Um, let's see, underbody detail. So let's see. Yeah, the underbody detail is definitely better than what I've seen in most other places. Um, it's definitely better than Walders again because there's no Walders doesn't have any of this piping stuff. I gotta say, it's it's actually better than Branchline. I, I I'm surprised in saying that, but it's actually better than Branchline. They actually have some additional details that Branchlines wouldn't have. Like again, this. Uh, pickup generator, um, K, uh, what do you call it, generator belt, um, some more of these um, just, I don't know, connection areas. That stuff is actually missing on branch line models, and this one actually has it, which I'm really impressed by. That's a good job on MTH parts. Wow. Their passenger cars are so nice, man. I'm I'm honestly blown away by this. Um, yeah, even the chains on here. Like, branch line has chains, but there's no, the, like, the chain in back is missing on the branch line one, I think. This one actually, you can see how it works. That's really fascinating. Okay, yeah, this this underframe detail is much better than branch. Eh, not much better, but definitely better, I would say. Um, both are outstanding, like complete overkill, because you're not gonna see half this stuff when you're actually seeing the car go by. But um, dang, that is really nice. Okay, um, <laughs> all right, enough of that. Um, the trucks free rolling, they look fine. Nothing to complain about there. Uh, the couplers. So yeah, this looks like an extended. It looks like an extended swing coupler. That's really nice. Um, there isn't much movement in the coupler. So in in Walders, basically the coupler swing, the coupler and the coupler box swings in the in the swinging points here. This one kind of just swings from this little point here. So it's actually not that useful. I can't really explain it well without a picture. So unfortunately, just just try to trust me here. This extended swing coupler isn't super effective. Um, but anyways, 
I digress. Um, let's go to the ends here. They actually do have the end gates. Wow. Okay. These end gates, man. I te technically, so the end of each, the, the 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 first car and the last car should have these. You know, so the car, so the passengers can't move beyond the point. Um, and so basically, what we have to do is either. So basically, I want to install these end gates to every single one of my passenger cars. Unfortunately, I have like like fifty passenger cars, and so buying like uh, these for two dollars a piece is just really adds up. And so I haven't really bothered, but MK just actually comes with that. That's really cool, and also has the handrails on the sides of the diaphragm. It has the um, the air brakes uh, piping, and also the steam uh, line, which again comes separately. The uh, plastic, this is, yeah, this is plastic. So again, all this stuff is plastic, which is kind of fragile. The these are metal, but these are plastic, which is kind of unfortunate. But still, I'm glad they included it. Um, wow, it's just done so well. Okay, and then the diaphragm. Okay, yeah, this is again very similar to branch light diaphragm. Again, as I said, it doesn't it doesn't go in and out, but it does swing left and right. So that's you gotta take it how it goes. Or I don't know how to say it, but they they could be better. They, they they definitely could be better. These are technically speaking non-operating because they don't go in and out. They only go left and right. Um, but they accomplish its purpose more or less. All right. Um. Yeah, there really isn't much more I can say about this. I'm just really surprised at how good these look. Um, especially with the underbody detail. Again, that's just ridiculous. I'm so used to Walders being like the top notch. But um, yeah. All right. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'll have to bring these down to the layout and see how the lights work, but for now, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, so the underframe looks good, the trucks look good, the sides look good, the interior could be done better. Um, the windows look good, the roof looks great, the end detail is amazing. Um, the coupler boxes could be done better, but that's pretty much my summary of these cars. Um, really well done, MTH. Man, I am so disappointed that they did not make more cars. Um... Again, they only made three. They only made three cars of each of each road name. They made the baggage, a twelve one sleeper, and then and a three two observation. Um, they didn't make any other cars. I'm really disappointed by that. If they made some cars, they can look so nice. They look honestly better quality than Walders. Now that being said, one last thing. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of tagging this at the end. But these doors, the Walders doors are much more like inset, so they look like they actually could open. Whereas these are just clearly like they almost they're like barely indented into the frame, and so they're. I don't know, they, they, they definitely do lack that realism look. Um, again, so yeah, while there's ones that are inset more, so they look like they actually might be a separate piece, whereas these are just clearly, like, on the same, you know, they're, they're like, just as flat as the sides here, so they look like, they don't look like they're open. They're very clearly just molded against the frame. Um, but that's, that's a really small drawback. Uh, drawback. It's really not a big deal. But, all right, anyways, I'm going to take these to the layout and see how they look in the dark. But otherwise, honestly, I am blown away currently at this point about how good these cars look. All right, so I'm now on back on the layout. Excuse these engines here. I probably should have muted them before I started recording. But anyways, um, real quick, so let's take out the uh, sleeper. Okay, the lights are clearly on right now. Let's turn the lights off. Those are some nice lights. Okay, so as you know, one of my biggest complaints about factory lighting is that it's too bright. Um, in fact, here, let me take out this Bachman combine car here. And you notice that it's the lighting is just way too bright on these cars. The idea of lights is that you should not be able to see the lights being on in the daytime. You can clearly tell during the daytime here, daytime, the lights are very much on. I don't like that because in real life you don't see the car lights being on during the daytime. You only see them on at night. They should be really dim, barely noticeable, you know. So these cars being very dim, you can barely tell that they're on. Can I tell? Hold up. I can't even tell if they're on right now. Okay, I know they, they are on. They're definitely on. Yeah, they're definitely on. There we go. Okay, so yeah. You can tell they're on, but they're very dim, which I really like about that. Maybe a tad too dim to my tastes, but I like that. that that's a good feature I like. Alright, so anyways. I'm impressed by the lighting. That That is really rare because I usually di greatly dislike factory done lighting. While this cars are done too bright, BLI cars are done too bright, Bachman cars are done too bright. All right, uh, and real quick, let me just show you guys how this looks. Um, this is my, this is one of the branch line cars I made myself. You can see that the uh, window shades are just done, you know, all different sides and stuff like that. And they actually look like window shades instead of just painted on the glass. And the underbody frame for these, the underbody detail for these are also really insane. But again, I'd say it's fairly comparable. But I think the branch, uh, the MTH ones are done 
a tad bit better. They look really good, honestly. Both of them look really good. Anyways, something is shorting the layout out. I hope it's not this car. No, it's not this car. I don't know. Something is shorting the layout out. Sorry about that. Alright, so anyways, this car is very solid. I do like the lighting on this. Let's see if the baggage car lights up too. Oh, and real quick, uh, here is a Walther's B60B baggage car. You can see how the doors are kind of inset, um, which I, I definitely think looks much better than the MTH. Very flat against the side kind of doors. The inset doors just look that much better. Anyways, let's see if these cars light up too. They do. Okay, so that's something I'll have to fix. I do not like uh, lit up baggage cars. Um, yeah, you can see how the, the portholes are lit up right there. And you can't even see anything inside there, which is really sad. So um, I'll probably have to remove the lighting on these. Uh, real quick, if you guys didn't know, Pennsylvania um, baggage cars, if there's a little star, if there's a little star on the side right here, it means that it's a me messenger baggage car. And that means that it's actually for mail. And that and what that means is that there's a little uh, there's a little guy inside with a little chair and a little ba a toilet. Um, and he's sorting the mail. And that's why there's also vents because that's where the, you know, the guy has to breathe. So he had some vents on top. And so the messenger cars should be lit up because there is, there is a person inside there. However, regular baggage cars should not have people inside. And so this one, tank leash, I don't think the light should be on unless if someone accidentally left it on during the, um, I don't know, during while the train's running. But anyways, so I'll probably have to remove the lights on this car, but I might keep it. I don't know. Um, regardless, though. <laughs> I, I really like these cars. I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, I paid $99 for these on Trainworld. Um, I, my, my original philosophy for, for passenger cars in general is that I should not be paying more than, more than $50 per car because that's a lot of money per passenger car. Passenger cars can be, should be half of really cheap. Uh, I paid 100 bucks for these two. I actually paid 89 because I had a discount. But anyways, these originally re retailed for, I think, $150. Um, Trainroll has them for 100 right now. My friend actually bought four packs of these, so eight cars total, which is insane. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, so what can I say? These are solid cars. So, um, compar definitely comparable to those high-end cars, and I think they're, I think they're, yeah, I think they're worth every cent. I think they're really solid. Um, things can be done better for the, for the sleeper here. The interior can be done better. The, the, um, the, uh, Window blinds can be done better, and then the coupler boxes and the diaphragms can be done a bit better. But otherwise, that otherwise that thing is really solid. The baggage car, honestly, there's no complaints. I think it's done perfectly in every other way. Um, I'm honestly surprised that MTH chose to have um, prototype-specific baggage cars, so they didn't just take a Pennsylvania prototype and put on every single red road. Uh, for the Pennsylvania, you know, set they specifically use a Pennsylvania prototype for the, I don't know what other road names are, but for other road names, they specifically use other road name prototypes. So the fact that they actually made it prototype uh, specific is really, really impressive here. And um, yeah, honestly, just well done. Um, MTH Mead is the first person to make these B70 baggage cars and they look great. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's been a surprisingly long video because I'm just really excited about this, um, about these cars. And yeah, you'll definitely be seeing these cars operating on my layout sooner or later. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.